Hello everybody, Brad here with Scotchman Industries. Uh, we're going to take a look at a new model for us. It's not really a new model, but we just added some features to an older uh, model of ours. This is the new 5014 um, electric uh, turret machine. We call it the ET for electric turret. That means it's got an electric valving system versus our old style had a mechanical valving system where you stepped on a mechanical foot pedal to actuate the valve. This new system with the electric valve you now gain electric stroke control in the rear of the machine. You have electric controls in the front and you've got an electric foot pedal. Makes the machine a little bit quicker and much more accurate, especially when you're doing uh, uh, secondary tooling operations such as uh, on a press brake. We're gonna go ahead and fire the machine up, uh, go through it. Most of the other stuff is pretty much the same, uh, but I'll give you a quick demo on the machine. It's a 50 ton machine, which will do uh, is a good half inch plate and under machine. It's going to punch an inch and a quarter hole in half inch plate. And of course, Scotchman's makes all of our own punches and dies, all of our own tooling. Okay. Now with our turret model, of course you've got three punch stations. So when you change from one to the other, it's simply a flip of the lever, rotate your head to the next desired station, lock it in, and that's your change out time. Very, very quick. There's an oval hole. Of course we do rounds, ovals, square, slots any kind of hole that you need to put in your plate. If we don't have it in our brochure, give us a call and we'll make it for you. Rotate the head over to our third station. Uh, this is a popular punch and die set for us. It's called a corner turning punch and die. It's just made to radius off uh, the edges of your uh, metal so you're not standing in front of a belt sander all day. Okay, and that's how quick it is uh, to nibble off or round off or radius off the edges of your corners. Now we uh, go ahead and put the punch station back in the center position and we go down to our rectangular notcher which has a 3 8 capacity on a 50 ton machine. This is very handy. Uh, I'm going to make a butt joint right now for an angle shear frame. Um, but literally, however you stick your material in there, this is going to nibble it off for you. And our notcher is binded on each side uh, with wear plates. It does not allow the beam to flex at all. Uh, so you can do jobs like this without any worry about side loading your tool. Okay, and there's your butt joint. That's a popular uh, fabrication option for a lot of people making frames. Okay. But however you stick your material in there, it will nibble it off. If you need to trim edges, cut a certain angle, you can do those operations with this notcher without uh, worrying about side loading it. Of course, when you're not using it, flip down your guard. We're gonna come back to the middle section of the machine one flip of the switch. Now we're working on the angle shear. Uh, the angle shears come standard with every machine. This uh, particular uh, angle shear is a four by four by three eighths capacity on a 50 ton machine. It is a slug style angle shear. One nice feature is you can also miter on this angle shear. Okay, you've got a 45 degree edge. This is another way to make a box frame if you don't want to use your notcher. There's the piece we cut. We'll miter the other direction. And if you're welding a frame together, that's about as pretty as it gets, as quick as it gets. Now keep in mind this tooling area is uh, kind of set Scotchman's alone from all the rest in the industry. We have the largest open tool cavity of any iron worker in the world. 
Um, we're going to come back to this area, le area later uh, to go over some of our optional tooling that can also be put in this area. Down to our flat bar shear, we have a 14 inch flat bar shear, which is good for three quarter by four out to quarter by 14. Three-eighths by six plate cuts it with no problem. Keep in mind that you can get an optional uh, shearing table that has a squaring arm and uh, a set of jigs on it for 45 left and 45 right. We also got back gauges for these machines that you can put on if you're making a bunch of the same plates uh, that need to be the same length. You can push it right up to that back gauge. But you can also lock it down any degree you want. and make your gusset brackets that way. The nice feature with this machine with the electric stroke control is it's so easy to set your stroke just above and just below your material that if you're doing production runs of something like this you can maximize your time and increase your efficiency. All right, here we are again at the tool table area again. We got another tool in here that's very popular in the fencing industry. This is what we call our picket tool. Um, we're going to do some samples, but your finished product is the top of a picket fence. Uh, this particular tool is going to smash and trim uh, the material. We make these dies for half inch, three quarter inch, or one inch material. As always with tooling in the tool table, we're going to set our stroke for our tooling uh, to increase efficiency. And again with the 50 ton, that's how quick it is. We're going to go ahead and stick our material in until it hits the back stop. Cycle the machine, and there is your picket. Quick as that. Again, half, three quarter, and one inch material. We stock these dies. Now we've got our pipe notcher mounted in our tool table area. Uh, all of our pipe notchers can be used in the tool table area as well as the punch station. But we do have an area. Uh, sectioned off on our tool table that is milled out in the bed for the slugs to go. So it's very handy. The majority of our customers do use it in the tool table area. Um, I've changed it out. Again, two bolts to take the angle shear off, two bolts to mount the pipe notcher. It's as quick as that, quicker than anybody in the industry. I'm going to go ahead and set the stroke on my machine to maximize my efficiency. It's as simple as taking your pipe and keep in mind on the pipe notcher we have standard dies from three quarters of an inch up to two inch. We can go larger than that, just give us a call and we can custom build them for you. But we always have three quarter through two inch on the shelf. Simply rotate your machine, or cycle your machine, rotate your part, line up the notched edges with the lines. And there you have your perfect saddle, easy to weld. We'll do that one more time. Material in. Cycle the machine, rotate, cycle the machine, and there's your saddle. Okay, now we're back up to the tool table area of our iron worker. We've got a 12 inch press brake up in the tool table area right now. It does have the front table with squaring arm and the back gauge hooked onto this uh, press brake. Uh, by utilizing these two features, you can get your material uh, aligned in the tooling correctly and your distance the same if you need to make the same brackets over and over again. I'll demonstrate here quickly. Now if we want to make that same bracket again, combined with our electric stroke control, keep everything the same. And there's your brackets. One thing you can also do uh, with this press brake and you can get either an 8 inch or a 12 inch press brake for the tool table area on this machine but you can also step bend with it as well. I'll demonstrate that now.
And that's what you can achieve while step bending.